Hi there, all my crafty friends. Halloween is right around the corner, and I have a spooky mixed media project for you today. It's going to be all about monsters, ravens, spiders, and witches' potions. If you're ready, let's make a great big spooky mess. I got this framed chalkboard at the thrift store for $2. The frame is all chipped and messed up, which is what I was looking for, and I'm going to mess it up even more. I removed the chalkboard insert, cleaned it up a little bit, and painted it an off-white. The rice paper I intend to use has an off-white background as well. It's always best to use light colors when you're going to decoupage rice paper. Dark colors will muddy up your image. This amazing rice paper came from decoupagenapkins.com and I'll tell you all about them in just a little bit. I'm using a water brush to remove all the white edges from the paper and leave a tattered edge. Torn edges are much better to decoupage than a cut edge. It's very hard to blend a sharp cut edge. Evan asked me to do something spooky for Halloween. I hope you're watching, Evan. Let me know how I did. The rice paper is all prepped and ready to glue down. I'm not using the standard Mod Podge for my decoupage medium. I have found a better way. I'm using Polyvine Decorators Varnish. It's great as a decoupage glue as well as a sealer. I'm covering the entire board with a good coat of polyvine, making sure to take it out to all the edges. This product is very impressive and I've been using it quite a lot. This formula is somewhat heat and water resistant. There are several formulas and some are highly heat and water resistant. Polyvine is also UV resistant, so you can feel free to put your creations in sunlight without fear of fading. And this product can be purchased from decoupagenapkins.com. Decoupagenapkins.com has such a great selection of rice papers, as well as napkins that you can purchase one at a time. Rub-on transfers, molds, modeling clay, stencils, stamps, scrapbook paper, and much more. Over 6,500 products. And carry three new lines of paint. Dixie Bell Chalk Mineral Paint, Clay Mud Paint, as well as Pentart in a wide range of colors. They are wonderful to work with and send out their orders fast. They offer several automatic discounts when checking out on orders over $50, $75, and $125. Subscribe to the newsletter by entering your email address and you'll receive 10% off your next order. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave you a link in my description box below. You can see where I overlap the second piece of rice paper. It will lighten up when it dries and it'll be covered with some witch's potion. I gave the board another coat of polyvine all over. I let that dry for about an hour. Polyvine actually dries pretty fast. Now it's time to sand the edges. Sand in a downward motion and it will cut the excess paper off with a nice clean cut. I made a stencil with my Cricut machine. I cut it first on paper so I could see exactly where I wanted to put the raven. Now I'm going to line up the stencil with the paper cutout. The secret to great stenciling with no bleed is a repositional spray adhesive. I sprayed just a little bit on the back of my stencil. You don't need much. Since the stencil is clear, it's very hard to see. So I put some painter's tape around the edges so I wouldn't paint over the edges by mistake. And now I'm going to paint Raven cobalt blue. Don't worry, he's not going to stay that color. Where are you watching from? Let me know in the comments. It's fun to see what cities and countries you are all watching from. I'm filming from Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. I let that dry for about 30 minutes and now I'm going to very carefully paint over my Raven with Folk Art Crackle Medium and I'll let that dry for about two hours. All the products and tools I use in this video will be listed below in my description box. Each one has a blue link to make it easy for you to find them. 
All the products and tools I use and recommend in my videos have been tested by me. I won't suggest something that I haven't used myself. Also, any of the product links I provide you with are safe for you to click on. I painted just below the blue edge so you could see a slight blue outline. It'll crackle and you'll see blue peeking out of the black paint. I let that dry for about two hours. I used a heat gun for just a couple minutes to give me a little bit more cracks. I carefully painted a high gloss varnish on just the Raven. I want him shiny to contrast with the dead flat background. I'm going to take this really messed up frame and mess it up a little more. I sanded it here and there to remove some of the existing paint and then did some dry brushing with black paint, making sure to get it a little heavier in the corners. Now it looks dirty and decrepit, just exactly what I wanted. I bought this potion bottle decoration at Dollar Tree. I'm going to remove the bottles and completely redesign it all. I bought one other one too so I'd have enough bottles. I sanded them at the bottom where they had been cut and now I'm going to paint the back of them in different colors. Other than the red, I used pearlescent and metallic colors. I gave each bottle two coats of paint and let them dry for about an hour. I'm going to do a different finish on each bottle because each bottle has a different potion in it. I'm starting off with the red one. I'm going to give it a fine line crackle finish and I'm applying component number one. And I'll let that dry until it turns clear about an hour or so. While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm applying component number one of classic crackle varnish to the green bottle. Then I'll apply component number two and let that dry for a couple of hours. I have a video with step-by-step -step details on how to use each one of the crackle varnish techniques I'm using today. I'll leave a link for you in my description box. There is important information, so make sure you watch it. Now it's time for component two on the green bottle. And I'll let that dry for a couple of hours. The red bottle is dry and I used my heat gun to get some great cracks. I'm going to antique this bottle with black oil paint to make all the cracks stand out. I'm wiping it on with a soft cloth and then wiping it off. It'll stay in all the cracks to make them stand out. I'm using crimson oil paint to antique the green bottle. The crimson and green give a spectacular effect with the tiny cracks using the classic crackle finish. I'm moving a little faster than I normally do in my videos. If I missed anything and you have any questions, be sure to let me know. This video may be a little longer than my normal videos, but please stick around to the end. I promise you'll be amazed at how great this project turns out. The copper bottle is getting the same crackle medium as the Raven did. I'll brush that on and let it dry for a couple of hours, then paint it with an off-white paint. As I'm putting it on, the cracks are already appearing. I'll let that dry for about an hour. Now I'm going to antique around all the edges with a dark brown oil paint. The blue bottle is getting the same crackle as the copper bottle and the Raven. I'm letting it dry for a couple of hours and then painting it with black paint. Okay, let's have some fun experimenting now. The first thing I did was seal the pink, silver, and gold bottles with a glossy spray sealer. I poured a little bit of Elmer's clear school glue in a small lid and now I'm using the smallest amount of food coloring. Just a little bit on the tip of a toothpick is all that's needed. First I covered the bottle with a very thick coat of the clear glue and now I'm adding some dots of the red glue with the toothpick. Now I'm swirling it around with a fan brush and it looks so cool. Now I'm moving on to the silver and gold bottles using different colors of the food coloring. If you're enjoying this video, please let me know by hitting that like button. And why not share this with a friend? Thanks for doing that. If you'd like to be notified anytime I upload a new video, click that bell. 
I ended up adding a little bit of blue to the yellow one. I like the way it turned out on more of a green side. Red, blue, and yellow are primary colors, and you can use combinations of these colors to make any color under the rainbow. I'm using some of my oil paints to go around the edges of these three bottles to give them some depth. I'm using green for the gold bottle, a turquoise blue around the silver bottle, and I ended up using brown around the pink bottle. The blue wasn't quite right, so I mixed a little bit of the green with it, and it turned out perfect. I'll let them dry for about an hour, and then give them another coat of clear, glossy spray varnish. I have a little box with tons of clay embellishments that I made and didn't use. But I save everything and I thought these would be perfect for this project. I'm going to make them look like rusty old pieces of metal and add them to all the bottles. This is a really cool technique. I'm starting off by painting them all with the color tin and I'll let them dry for about 30 minutes. I'm mixing paint color Georgia Clay and Texture Sand one part paint to two parts texture sand. I'm adding that sparsely here and there and I'll let it dry for 30 minutes. I know the color looks terrible right now but bear with me when I'm done it'll look like rusted iron. I'm mixing the paint color Asphaltum with water, about two parts paint to one part water. I'll brush that over the entire piece and let it dry for about 30 minutes. And voila, a rusty piece of metal. Isn't that a cool technique? You can find the kit to do this technique at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to make a few creepy things out of this clay by redesign that I got from decoupagenapkins.com. This clay is really nice for small delicate molds. It unmolds very easily. I'll add it to the mold, clean around the image, and then remove it. And I'll let it dry overnight. Once dry, I'll paint the bat with the same rusty iron technique. The claws and I will get something a little different. Not sure how to paint a creepy reptilian thing, but I have until tomorrow to figure it out. The claws are going over the edge of the frame. I'm bending them over the frame so they dry that way. I'm giving the eye and claws a base coat of black paint and I'll let them dry for about an hour before moving on with my creepy reptilian paint job. I'm mixing a pearlescent blue, green, and copper with some water to make them really runny. I'm starting off with the copper and brushing it all around the eye and claws. It's very runny so I'm dabbing it with a napkin. Then I did the same thing with the blue and green paints. The colors mix and it looks pretty cool. I wanted the colors to run together a little more than they did, so I spritzed them with a little water. I'm painting the eyeball and the nails of the claw an off-white, then painted some green between the eyeball and the eyelid just for creepy value. I used some asphaltum mixed with water to antique around the eyeball and the nail on the claws. I brushed it on and then wiped it off so it would stay in the cracks and crevices. More creep value. I let the paint dry for about an hour and then gave them a coat of glossy varnish but painted the nails on the claw in dead flat. 
I decided every witch must have a toad. I used clay and a mold to make him. I started off painting him a dark green, then brushed on the watered down copper paint, then antiqued him with watered down asphaltum and painted on a clear varnish. He looked a little too dark, so I used a white rub to give him a few highlights and then gave him some red eyes for a little creepiness. And I gave at least 30 minutes drying time between each of those steps. The witch needs a shelf to put all her potions and witchy things on. I'm using the original block that bottles came on, but it isn't big enough, so I'm adding a few Jenga blocks to enlarge it a little bit. I want the shelf to look like wood, so I'm rolling out some clay and I'll add a wood look design on the clay using a texture mold. I rolled it out on a separate silicone mat so I could peel it off easily because I rolled it out pretty thin. I'm gluing and wrapping the clay around the shelf form that I made. I'm working on some great projects for the upcoming weeks. I'll be doing some decoupage, more 3D air dry clay, and mason jar decorating. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of them. I added a few ridges with my palette knife to blend the wood grain a little. I'm going to let that dry overnight. I'm also making a potion sign with some clay. I rolled it out and then ripped it around the sides to make it look old and worn. I tapped on it a little bit with my brush to create some texture and I'll let that dry overnight as well. I'm giving the shelf a base coat of light tan and I'll let that dry for about 30 minutes. I'm going to make the sign look like rusty metal to match the other embellishments. So I started off with the tin paint color and letting that dry. I'm adding the rest of the sign and letting that dry as well. I'm going to add some antiquing to the shelf which will give it the wood look. I'm mixing it with some water to thin it out. I'm brushing it on and wiping it off. Now it's time for the asphaltum on the sign. I also added a little bit on the shelf and it turned out pretty good. But when I held it up to the frame, the colors didn't look good together. The wood tone was too golden, it needed to be a little more drab. So I added a gray wash using some gray paint and water. Then added a black wash using Vintage Effect Color Wash. Now the color is perfect. I let it dry and then gave it and the sign a final coat of Decorator's Varnish in Dead Flat. I cut out this vinyl potion sign with my Cricut machine and I'm going to transfer it onto my rusty sign. I just love this rusty metal technique. Let me know what you think about it. Is it something you're going to give a try? Now it's time to dress up all the potion bottles. I printed and cut out some labels on my Cricut machine. I printed them on sticker paper to make it a little easier to apply. I'm using some black ink and a dauber to age them a little bit around the edges. I got these stickers at Dollar Tree a long time ago. They've been in my stash for a while and I think they would be perfect as bottle tops. I used a little bit of hot glue to make sure they stay on.
I'm also using hot glue to attach all my rusted metal embellishments. After I added the embellishments, the tops didn't exactly match, so I'm adding the rust and asphaltum to them as well. I love the way they look now, and of course the bottle that says bat wings gets the little clay bat. Send me a comment and let me know what type of project you would like to see next. Decoupage, mixed media canvases, or more mason jar decorating. Your suggestion could be my very next video. I answer every single comment I receive. I love hearing from all of you and look forward to reading all your comments. On the red bottle, I wanted it to look like the tag was actually hanging around the neck of the bottle. So I added some twine and glued it to the top of the tag. Now what kind of witch doesn't have a pile of bones? I bought this skeleton garland from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut them all up. Yikes! I feel a little bad for what I'm doing to these four skeletons. I sanded off any sharp edges and added a little of the asphaltum paint on the ends to dirty them up a little bit. I'm adding some of the clear glue to three tiny bottles and I'm going to put a tiny bit of the food coloring to make some colored potions. I mixed it up and then drained out most of the liquid, then added some glitter and corked them up. Unfortunately, as they sat, all the glue and glitter sank to the bottom of the bottle, but it still looks pretty cool. You need candles to cast spells, so here we go. I got these really cute mini taper candles at Hobby Lobby. I'm cutting them down to a smaller size. Then I'm burning the ends so the wax drips down the sides. Well, you can't use hot glue on candles. Found that out the hard way. So I'm using tacky glue to glue them to a small piece of cardboard. After the glue dried, I cut the cardboard close to the candles, and now I'm dripping more wax to hide the edge of the cardboard. And by the way, don't do this over your silicone mat. Wax is the one thing that is really hard to get off of silicone. I was surprised, nothing normally sticks to my silicone mat. But the candles turned out really cute and ready for casting spells. I got a package of these cute little witch brooms at Dollar Tree, but I don't like the bow on it. I'm swapping it out for a black bow and a flower that is a deep purple. I have all my little witchy embellishments made and it's time to put all of this together. This is the part of any project that gets me excited. I'm putting the board back in the frame to start. I'm gluing the shelf at the bottom to begin with, since just about everything I made will go on that shelf. I figured out the center and marked it off with some painter's tape so I know exactly where to lay it once I have the glue on. I lifted up the black bottle a little bit from the bottom to cover up the seam between the pieces of rice paper. I also marked that with painter's tape. I also measured how wide to put the other two bottles. I measure everything. I don't like leaving anything to chance.
Then I started gluing the other bottles in place. I'm using a Shore Bonder cordless glue gun. I absolutely love this glue gun. It's so nice to work without biting a cord that's in your way all the time. I have this listed in my favorite tools section in my description box below in case you want to check it out. I measured for the potion sign and glued it at the top. I'm tilting the frame so you'll be able to see how I'm gluing everything to the shelf. I made a pile out of the cut up bones. I made hands hanging over the edge and then put the skulls on the top. I'm gluing the tiny glass bottles in place along with some really tiny colored glass bottles I found on Etsy. What do you guys think of this project? I would love to hear from you. It's such a pleasure reading everyone's comments. Now the candle, and the only reason I can use hot glue is because I used the tacky glue to glue the actual candles to cardboard. Get ready for the creepy reptilian thing. Here we go. A creepy eye and some creepy claws. I had only planned on one set of claws at the top of the frame, but in the end I decided that it needed a second set on the side. And the cute little toad is going on the shelf. And the raven got a red eye. I'm going to use black vintage effects wash to add some shadowing. I'm mixing it with a little water so it doesn't go on too dark or too thick. I'm adding a black edge on all the bottles to give them a rounded look. I'm painting it on and then rubbing with my finger and a Q-tip to soften the line. Now I'm adding some shadowing on the paper by the edges of all the bottles to make them stand out from the background. You can see how once I add that it brings the bottle forward. I'm also grunging it up a little bit by the edges of the frame. I want it to look old and dirty. I did some shadowing on the frame around the claws but it didn't film properly. You'll see it at the end when I show the complete piece. Take notice of how the claws seem to stand out because of the shadowing. Which one of the techniques that you learned today are you most excited about trying? Let me know in the comments. I'm gluing the cute little witch's broom to the frame and added some matching flowers on the right bottom corner. This has been such a fun project. I know it was a long video, but thanks for sticking around. I put together a playlist of some other tutorials you may enjoy. Click the picture on the right to be taken directly to that playlist. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video.
Don't forget to subscribe by clicking my picture in the top right corner so you don't miss any future videos.